the Uganda we want. So mu Uganda jetu agala mu lutalo no loku lwanyisa obulabba yo bukenu zinze champi to obuvundo. Mu mm. na Uganda ino kubanga yenyigira mu fena twenyigira mu lutalo. Ate abalala tebasomye kuzimba. Wabula bayizo kuzimba. Uganda jetu agala okulaba. Nge ngudo zonna nkole. Nunji public transport nga weeri. Kati eno government yeriwo a uh, elina akabonero ka lusifa. Buli chotu mwa kwa mwuganda chiri kwa oksijeni. Eiza babi kama uli le marungi, uba mauli le mabi. <laughs> Minister teyeta agisa kabanga libu debu no. Zachi. At this time, why should somebody import the furniture from outside Uganda? Let us leave NRM to be in charge for another 36 years or more. I really want to see a Uganda that believes in the rule of law. If you have a constitution in place, follow it to the latter. Don't change laws just because you want them to favor you. Kuba nyagalo manye nti obugaga bonna Uganda boye yagaliramu buita wafe kutakali afe. Naye kusoga mujidibaze. How can a referral hospital refer you to a private clinic? Na Uganda we want buli mtu atiko kumanya I am a stakeholder nkwati bwako sikwesulie wana gamba. Uganda Oyinzo kuka kananga mwina ba graduate saba university nga banji okusinge bungeleza. Mwe mfuo kasi nga nyoku degree. Eli boba fokasi nga nyonti bienso mie mbijemo mlimone nkola. We are dreaming of a Uganda where at a young age there is such a relationship between parent and son, parent and daughter, where the daughter can say this is what I want. Uganda jetuwa gali mpia, teso wala kumira wonga tuwali mateka. Ama kiteka aga kora. The Uganda we want. One of Hello, our viewers. Thank you so much for watching Dream TV, Bonyolo TV, and also for listening to us on Impact FM and also via our social media platforms and on our website www.imc.ug. My name is Mulanzi Robert, your host of the program, The Uganda We Want. And this is episode two with Council Waswa Fahad Gisa. He is with us and he is sharing his perspective on the kind of Uganda that he would love to see as a lawyer, as a senior counsel. He's been practicing this thing for the last uh, seven years. So he, he, he has some good experience in there. So let us listen to him again this second episode. And uh, I believe uh, you as a Ugandan, you will do something as well from what he's going to say to see that we achieve the kind of Uganda that you envision. Council, I just want to give you just a, a minute mm. to welcome back mm. uh, our, our viewers, greet them, and then we'll start off. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Mulanzi. I would, uh, I'm so grateful to be back. And uh, once again, I would send my greetings to the viewers, uh, my parents, Phoebe Chenaga and Sozi Chenaga. Uh, Phoebe Chenaga and, uh, and uh, Sozi, same mambo. And uh, I'm really uh, so delighted and very happy mm. to be on this program. Wow. Well, um, when we ended our first episode, there is something that you said that nation building starts from building institutions. Yes. I didn't want to, to paraphrase mm. what you say. I want you to quote that for us mm. as we start off our mm. show today. Mm. Why did you say that mm. to me? I want the listeners also to, mm. you know, at least get mm. something from that quote and then I will mm. uh, do a recap. Actually, uh, that is the gospel truth. Why? Because the country will need lawyers, the country will need journalists, the country will need teachers, the country will need uh, engineers, the country will need uh, doctors and others. Now, if uh, these institutions that train all these professions and all these people are not truly really very proper to do what they are supposed to do. We shall have building collapsing 
on people. We shall have roads constructed, but for in, they constructed the road today by 2024. We have potholes within the road. We shall have teachers that will be having unhealthy relationships with the students because from their institutions where they are trained, you get. We shall have lawyers that will be eating clients' money. We shall have lawyers that will be misrepresenting clients and cases being dismissed here and there. Lawyers that will appear in court from bar, from a bar to court. You go to a court when you are drunk and you are representing a client's case, defending a five billion case. We shall have uh, doctors that will negligently do their work. So, but if these institutions are really strong and they produce quality as opposed to quantity, then we shall build the nation. Mm. And uh, we shall also have police officers. We have what we call military institutions that train police officers. Uh, I, I, was, I was seeing what was in Kenya. Some Ugandans are taking it for, 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 for granted. And like our Ugandan police wouldn't do that. No, our Ugandan police in one way or the other may be indisciplined. They're not disciplined. We're seeing in Kenya, you saw uh, a rioter who, who, after getting tear gas in, in his eye, went to the police officer to get water. And the police officer was giving water. Mm. You get that is a trained police officer. A, tra a police officer is not trained to tongue rush, beat, and do what. It, a police officer is trained from his institution to keep law and mm. order and keep the citizen. Mm. So if this citizen in the in, in the police officer's work of uh, of, 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 of you know of, of coming down the riot, he has tear gas and what not to add more tear gas but to give water. You get so. Uh, and last time I was, I was, I was, I was hearing, uh, there's a certain general, my friend, he really makes me very happy. I like him, mm -hmm. General Tafiri. <laughs> yes. Kahindo Tafiri. Yeah, Kahinda. General Kahindo Tafiri was like, don't beat this opposition. Don't beat them. Show them the way to peacefully demonstrate. You get, and now we are seeing a change in the way the police is handling what? The opposition. The opposition. Even if the opposition be. wants to become more violent, yes, still the, the police. The, yes, tries there to... is that. This actually, I would actually give credit to the Ugandan police. Mm. They have. You saw when Boboen was in Masaka, Chaguran, Chaguran mm. was in Masaka. The way they handled this man was very proper. Mm. You get very proper because in a civilized society, people should disagree with the government. Mm. You get, they disagree with the government. And then government also disagree with them. Opposition should also be kept where it is supposed to be. Mm. Don't expect government to give sweet Pepsi, to give juice to opposition. Yeah, because no. you're opposing them. The, right now. The, you are supposed to oppose them, but they should keep you where you're supposed to be. Yeah. The, there should be atmosphere of operation for both people in government and people in what? In, in, opposition. in opposition. But that one goes back to the institution. Where have you trained the police? From if you, the, the Uganda we need tomorrow, or the Uganda I need, is where the opposition and the government can work together. Say that again for me. The Uganda I need mm -hmm. is where the opposition and the government can work together. Where you will go in any election, somebody is declared as a president, but the person who has lost is willing to work with them. President the Juli. That's the Uganda we need. And now I'm seeing the way Uganda police is handling. And also I would, I would thank the president. The president is removing the military from the police. Mm. It is the military is being removed from what? From the police in one way or the other. And because now you see a soldier is trained to kill. That is his responsibility. Defending the country even his at duty. At, yes, at extreme in the institution. A police officer is not trained you to that. A police officer is trained you to listen. You get go step by step. Step by step. If you've done anything wrong. But a soldier is, is trained a doy is mm. a doy. Yeah. An enemy is an enemy. So now if you bring the the, 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 the military in police, the military the soldiers will deal with the with the with demonstrators and opposition as a doing. 
Oh, so for them, if you're rioting, if you're demonstrating, you're trying to show your unhappiness over something, for them, they are looking at you as an enemy. They are trained to, don't blame them. That's how they are trained. You get, that's how they are trained. A demonstrator is an enemy to a military officer. Yes, that's how they are trained. An enemy is an enemy. But police officers are trained in a, in a, in a different mm. way. Mm. You get, police officers are trained to deal with all characters. There is one police officer, a friend of mine in the RPC uh, South, that is in Saba. Mm. Sometimes I talk with him and I see an element of a true police officer. Nsaba is sits in Natet. He found Nsaba. He's an RPC South. He's an RPC OKMP South. You see that this man is trained mm. to deal with people, even at an extreme, to listen. But a military officer will not listen. An order is an order. You don't ask. You first execute. Mm. And then you ask after. You get. So I thank the president for that. Mm. Now we are having the new IGPs, Akagaba, mm. is it Akagaba? Yeah, Akagaba. Yeah, Akagaba. This man Abbas. has Abbas. This man has been in police ever since I think I began understanding that man was in police. So I think the institutions are key. So the institutions where you train police officers from, where you train lawyers from, where you train every person from, they should take time to grill these people mm. into what they are going to do. Then we wow. shall have the Uganda we need. Wow. Thank you so much uh, for elaborating more on that piece. Now, uh, we left off uh, in the first episode when you were talking, uh, um, we, we, we were bringing in the physics thing here when I asked you, mm. do Ugandans really respect our constitution? Because mm. after nailing that down, mm. so I'll ask you, mm. let me even ask you, answer that as well. Mm. Do leaders of this country respect the constitution of Uganda? Mm. I would answer that question that uh, they really do. The people and the leaders? So I'll first talk about the people, the mm. Ugandans, then I'll come to the leaders. The leaders are also Ugandans, but just that we've elevated them mm -hmm. into being our four eyes, yeah. one way or the other. Uh, the Ugandans really respect the law. Uh, if you want to know that the Ugandan respect the, the Ugandan still subscribe to the courts of Uganda, the Ugandans go and vote. That's respect of the law. Every time there is voting, government has passed a lot of directives and a lot of what the Ugandans are respecting. Every Ugandan, most of the Ugandans have national IDs. Ugandans go and get uh, driving permits when they are buying land. They go to the LCs to put their signatures. That's, they're going to respect actually the law. They love their country. You get, they really love their what? Their country and they're respecting their law as Ugandans. Now, you cannot discuss whether the leaders respect the law or not without discussing our area discussion or submission, my area submission on institutions. Mm. Uh, you see, in law, there's what you call command responsibility and individual responsibility. responsibility. Uh, last to do with the Rome Statute, and well, that's now international law. Uh, when we have a leader, let me say the president. Mm. Uh, the president is the commander in chief of armed and unarmed forces and the fountain of honor that every person should look at. And uh, so armed, we talk about what in law? What do we mean? Armed forces. The, we talk about the military, the, the police, police and so on, what, security the, agencies the and everything. Okay, the non-armed. Non-armed forces, we have reserved force. Mm. We have uh, the reserved force. Okay. They are not armed, but they are there. No one knows them. They know themselves. You get. He's also the commander in chief of, them, of all okay. of those ones. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, fountain of honor yes. overall. Fountain of honor is the overall part of the constitution of 1995 that now has amended because they have got a lot of amendments. There are one, two, 
one, one, two, B, one, one. We've amended it. But it is the 1995 constitution. Now, the president, I would say, the president respects the constitution. Some Ugandans would disagree with me. But it would be, uh, the question would be, respecting the constitution, to which extent? Okay. You're yes. bringing the extent thing. Yes, okay. to which extent? I would say that the president of the public of Uganda respects the constitution. The constitution talks about elections. To a larger, to a smaller. Uh, that is that is a very, a very, <laughs> that is a very, I would say that. Uh, In-depth uh, yes, question? We, yeah, yes, yes. We wouldn't go there. Why wouldn't we go there? Uh, because I want to discuss the broader view. Mm. The broader view. The constitution of Uganda provides for executive Judiciary mm -hmm. and legislature. legislature. The question would be Did we have governments? Do we have any government in Uganda where we didn't have this? Mm. We look at the government of Uganda from 1971 to 1979. Did we have the parliament? Did we have the executive? Oh, 62. We don't include the 62. No, let us look at this. 1971, that's the Amin government. Amin came in government. Down was a I will not say. I will not say that, because if we, if we discuss the good things that I mean did for this country, we may not even finish. But now we look at 1971 to 1972. Mm. Uh, did we have the executive? We had the executive. Did we have the, the, the legislature? Did we have the judiciary? No. We no, have. we didn't. 1986 to 2024. Do we have them? Yeah. We have them. Then uh, the question would be, how are they operating? So but by law, they are there. Let us, first, comes to operation. Uh, let us now first appreciate that they are what? They are there. They are there. You get them. Okay. Now, I was talking to one of my fathers mm. that uh, and my friend that uh, in 1971-72 there, the armed forces, if they would give you a gun, don't ask for salary. Mm -hmm. They have given you a gun, don't ask for what? For salary. Use the gun to get, to get money. To get money. Now, let us look. We have the UPDF. The UPDF may be having its uh, shortcomings as any force, but we still have discipline. Mm. And it is regulated under the UPDF Act. Mm -hmm. That now you can sue a soldier in courts of law. And he appears. Back then, they were given a gun to, yes. look, to use it to use in it any way they want. In any way they want. <laughs> you get it? We have their shortcoming of the UPDF and others, but yeah. we appreciate the fact. Me, myself, I'm defending a general who has been sued. Mm -hmm. In the courts of law. And if you put in defense, the man is also willing to come as a witness. Wow, a general. A general. I'm defending a general. In the massacre court. Mm. He has been sued. The man is willing to, to come. To come in court. And every time he's calling me counsel. What was in court? Do we need to come? When are we beginning up here? A general. A general. <laughs> you get. <laughs> Would you sue a general in the government over me? Would you sue a general? He has the gun. You wouldn't. <laughs> he has the gun. Or can you sue a general in Sudan? Can you? Hmm. So, if you ask me a question whether the, our leaders respect the law, I would say they respect. Then our question to which extent can hmm. come after. If we can have a general being sued and is succumbing to the jurisdiction of court, he appears in court and he says, yes, my lord, when he came with a, a convoy out, when the whole court is under serious surveillance of this man, but he has come in his lair, he's putting on usual clothing, and he's there, seated waiting for his lordship. I think there is. We still are, we have it. Our leaders are respecting the law, but they have their shortcomings. 
Mm. And these shortcomings that they are having goes back to the institutions. Where some of our leaders, these, the institutions that have trained them, have not trained them well. And some of them have what we call moral decay. Mm. We have also generals that are grabbing land in this country. Mm. So you can't put it on every general. You can't put it. As much as we have those generals that are bad, but we also have generals that are really good. I was told that there is a certain general that even uh, sleeps at Gaba Road. The gentleman does not even have a lead car. If it is a jam, it is a jam for all of you. I would love to see him. Hmm? Yes, if it is a jam, it is a jam for all of you. Is it Coretta? You know, Coretta, I think. You get it. If it is a jam, it is a jam for all of you. So, but there are others who have what you call moral issues. They are our leaders, but they have what you call moral, moral issues. issues. Mm. That they have even transferred to the disrespect of the law and how do we deal with them the courts are open even when a presiding judge does not do what he is supposed to do i remember the words of professor kirunda oh, yes kirunda uh, the lecturer he was telling me that the law is a very interesting thing it may not catch up with you today but anytime Mm. It will catch up with what? With you. With you. As much as we are seeing what is happening in our country, that maybe some impunity, some what, but that one does not withdraw the fact that their leaders so are really respecting the law to the latter. Should we say that some are respecting it, picking out something that favors them? You see. And which is not favoring them. They disrespect. Let me tell you something. In jurisprudence, there are two laws of nature. Mm. The first law of nature is self-defense. The second law of nature is a uh, is a self-identification. Self-defense and self-identification. Yes. When something is going to fall on your eye, to drop on your eye, no one tells you to cross the eye. By reflex, the eye will close. That is self-defense. If you are sleeping and uh, Something moves on your body. By reflex, mm. you will kick it away. You get that's you're, def you're defending your body. You are your defending. Arm. The body is defending. And you def Even without the brain knowing what it is, but the, you throw it away. Mm. Sometimes whenever you try to attack anyone, he will try to defend himself. But now, do you defend yourself within the law? That is the question. Now, some of these leaders of ours now, that's where they go wrong. Because they have power, they want even to override mm. the already existing principles of what? I would say that I was happy with the arrest that, we are, that was made of some of our MPs and what. Yeah, I see the list is growing. Yes, that one, I think the government uh, is trying to show that everyone can be touched. You get and remember, when they arrest you, it's not that you are you have been convicted, but they are not, they are making investigations. Mm. And in your position as an MP, if they just tell you about this and this, you are able to interfere with the investigation. You get. Mm. So let us have you first keep you here as we are investigating. But I'm not saying that you really did it. It is court that has the final, the final answer. Yes. Final judgment, actually. Though other people that are not really taking call will jump on that and say they, are, they, are, they have done this, they have done this, but not until court pronounces them. Guilty. Guilty. They are not guilty. They are not guilty. But court now, uh, government is, and the CID department is investigating. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So, to answer your question, Mr. Mlanzi, the fact is, our leaders respect the law. However, we still have some impunities that we need to deal with. From the institutions? From the institutions, right from the institutions and back to the leaders. I've seen a scenario, I argued the matter where I got bailed for somebody. Mm. Then when he got out like this, they arrested him again. 
as, as like if you just go to bed. Then they brought other fresh charges. Okay, we are arresting him on new charges. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So we still have uh, as in the country, you always have those things that are not proper. But the question would be, how do we make them proper? Do we make them proper by being extremes? You know, it's not good to be an extremist. I always tell people that the, the reason why Jonas Avimbi, remember Jonas Avimbi of Angola? Mm, of Angola, yes. Jonas Avimbi, the reason why Jonas Avimbi even died without coming to the government is that the man was uncompromising and there was an extremist. In life, you don't need to be an extremist. If there is a way you can compromise in one way or the other, compromise, but within the law. Mm, when it comes to law, you can compromise. Within the law. Within the law. Compromise within the law. Because if you don't compromise within the law, you create a bad precedent. Oh. And that bad precedent will lead the country into limbos, legal limbos. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Wow. Council. <laughs> mm. The question of land. Mm. I've I've had you in just a few minutes ago mm. talking about even journals that are evicting people from their land, from land, from their own land. That there are some journals, there are some not only journals, but people are being evicted from their own land. Mm. What is the root cause of mm. all this? Mm. Why has land become a problem? Instead of becoming a solution, uh, actually, it, it is going to become even more problem, problematic to us and to the country. It is, a, it is going to become a more serious problem than what you see now. You see, in 1962, when we got independence, Uganda had a population of, uh, of uh, 8 million people. In 1962. Yes, we are about eight, around eight million, eight, people. 8 million people. In 2024, the last census, we don't know what happened to this census because this one had a lot of comment. It was a little bit comic. The last census that they did were about 40 million people. How many years from 1962 to now? They're about 50 something, 52, 58 years, 60 years, up to 2024. You realize that from 1962, the population of Uganda has been increasing, growing. Mm. But the boundaries of Uganda have, have not been. expanded. We are still in the same boundaries. Yes. From the time we got our independence. Yes. The population is growing, but the boundary has not expanded. That means we are exerting a lot of pressure. The land that we had in 1962 as the whole Uganda and the boundary has not changed. It's the same land that we are still having in 2020, what? Mm, 24 and above. If you want to know this, get a Benson. Put 24. Small balls. 24. It will look as if the Benson is what? Mm. It can contain. You power 40. Power 60. Time you reach when the, the basin cannot contain mm. the ball. So, what am I leading at? The question of land roots from there. That as much as we are still having the same land uh, that we had since independence, with 8 million people, now we are 40. Going to 60 million people with the same land. What do you expect? There's pressure. There is pressure on that the land. That has been inserted on the land. Yes. There is pressure that has been inserted on the land. First of all, the value of land will hike. Will go high. Mm -hmm. Secondly, putting aside the value of land, there will be a lot of fraud. People will, will need to remain in the city. But they don't have land. Land. So what do they do? They will revise all means to get land. 
So if you want to know, one of the natural causes of the conflicts of land is that. However, you cannot discuss about you cannot discuss land before discussing different land tenure systems that we have in land. Yeah, because I was going to come to now the regulation. If how how has land been regulated from yes, 1962? Before, before you go to the regulation, we shall look at the tenure system mm. and uh, and uh, how land was owned before 1962, or how land was owned before. The coming, uh, the coming, the coming of the colonialists, and after the coming of the what? The colonialists. The colonialists. Before the coming of the colonialists, land was owned communally. You, you wouldn't have pressure whether you have land tomorrow or you don't have land tomorrow because your community owned what? Owns the land. So there was no pressure for and that. And moreover, we are even few. Yes, you are few. <laughs> you get why would you have pressure for that? You wouldn't. Yeah. Land was owned. Communal. Communal. You get it? Now, with the coming of the colonialists and, uh, and uh, the preachers and what, our land system changed to look like theirs. You get what I'm saying? Now, mm -hmm. we had what we call Myro land. That is the first land tenure. You go to what we call freehold. You go to what we call lease and customary. Mm. The mainland is only in Uganda. Only in Uganda. The mainland comes into existence with the 1900 Buganda. Oh, the Buganda Agreement. Yes. Now, in this Buganda Agreement, this colonial is defined the, 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 the king, Daudichwa, when he was young. Now, they appointed the regents, Sansilas Mugwanya, Zakaria, Kagwa, and others. Mm. Me, I always tell people and some of my students when I used to teach that, uh, that in this agreement, the colonialists bribed the regents within the what? Mm. The agreement. Is, is, isn't that your own thinking? No. If you are signing an agreement and in this in this agreement they give you land in miles. So Zaka Saapuru Kagwa Zakaria Kisingira and others, we are given land in miles. To sign. Oh. Again. Even Kambaka was given land, his own land. You get what I'm saying? Even Kabaka himself, the Namasuris and others were given, and also had what we call the crown land. The crown land is the present day public land and government land. Because the, the government took over what was for the crown, what was for the king. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So the Maya land is only in Buganda because this land was given in Maya. You see, when we are to discuss this thing of land, we need time, but let me take you through very fast. Now, they came, they would come like, let me say, they give you from here, Makerere, to Kansanga, they give you two miles. But on those two miles that they are giving you, it's not vacant. Mm. It has what? Eh. People. Who are still thinking this is our land? This is customary land. Uh, now the colonialists have come, they have said, now this land is for Zakaria Kagwa. It's for Sir Apollo. Because he signed on the agreement. Because he has signed. But that land has what? People. People. This brings in what we call squatters. Hey, you get it? This is squatters now, they are Bibanja owners. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those people who were on that land that had been given in the mail becomes Bivanja owners. And now Zaporo Kako Zakaria Singiri. Zakaria becomes a what? Becomes a landlord. Automatically. And the British government is recognizing the land, the landlord. Now in 1922, we get what we call the Busuru and mm. Mvujo. Lo. Busuru and Mvujo. How does it come? And why are you called the Chivanja owner? You are called the Chivanja owner because the landlord Akubanjo Busu. Hey. So you were of a Chivanja, Obanjiwa. And you had to take a Mvujo. You had to Okuvujirira. Mugana to cheat Okuvujiriro Mwami. Eh, Mwagurikaicha to cheat irrigation. Aha. You have to irrigate. Ah, you have to irrigate. <laughs> <laughs> the Zakaria Kagwa that they have given all of that work. The two miles. Who has the, the two, two miles? miles? 
Where you have your ancestral uh, burial grounds and everything. Uh, they have given to Zakaria as the legitimate owner now. Owner. Now for you, you become you become a chivanja owner. Who is sub Obanji Wobusuru? They are demanding you of Suru Okubanja. Is it demanding? You become of Wechivanja. Who is Kubanja? Who, who is demanding you? The Zakaria. The other one, who has the what? A male. A male owner. So now we have what we what, what call the Bataka uprising and the, the, the Busula and the Mvujo. It was too much. Mm. And the people are like, this is a lot. What are we going to was do? their land. You've been here. The Bataka were the landlords. They were also uprising. That the busuri is very little. Then the busuri was sized. And the present in the Bibanja owners are originating from that background that I'm giving you. Mm. You get? I get you. Now, Baba and Jim were all busuri. Mm. Imagine how Kasura Bachi? Balandi Road. Okay, but nanyi ni taka. But nanyi ni taka. Na itaka ni baga manti ba nanyi ni. Yama tuba no bako lachi. Jali diabu. Bariko. When the land was still communally owned. But with the coming of the, of the British government. Which British government wanted the land ownership to look as theirs. Now they are giving us the mile tenure system. They are giving land in mile. Kuwa de mile kumi za namaso le mile. But that land is not vacant. Now we have the bivanja. Owner and the landlord is one. The Vanja owners are many, many. I'm now trying to bring for you where the land conflict originated from yeah. and why we still and different ways how it came into existence. Now we go to I think it was a 190201 Bunyoro agreement and Kore agreement. We have a few only there, but also have the Vanja owners in what in Bunyoro. Hey. In Ankole, you get there are people who have Vivanja there. These agreements also were signed there. Mm. The 190102 Ankole Bunyoro land. Omzungu Ngaya Chivuga. Yes. Mm. Now, time reaches, or we come to the extent where these Vivanja owners mm. were really holding. Some big land, and they are paying rates to the legally known landlords. Mm? We reached an extent where the Vivanja owners are holding a lot of land, and they are paying less usul to the landlords. And the landlords were like, "We can't accept this." No kutumba, kutumba. You get it. So we had that what we used to call. The Bataka uprising, the Busulu and the Mvujolo of 1922. I think it was Frederick, the governor of Uganda, mm. by then. Then they sized the Busulu to be what? To be reduced. And now, Kwasikira, Omizungu Cheyakola, Pakakat. We are having the Vivanja owners and the what? And landlords. And the eh? landlords eh. who are recognized by the law. When you go in the Makindi, and now the biggest mile owner is the Kabaka of Buganda. Eh, hey, the king of Buganda. The king of Buganda is the biggest mile owner in the whole Uganda. He has a lot of Vivanja. Eh, Vivanja owners. Owners who are supposed to pay usul to the Kabaka. Eh, hey, that's why I saw the one woman when they were evicting the, the Rubiji people. You see, this is my soul. I've been even paying. Yes, I've been paying. I've been soul. paying. Because because the Buganda that land, land board. That land is here. Kabaka. When eh. you go back to the 1900 Buganda agreement, it must have been given eh. either Namasole, either what, the Kabaka, or all of that thing. Now, I want to be first. After having that in the land issue, mm. we're having a Bibanja owners, mainly in Buganda and the landlords. Out of a hundred cases, like now litmus advocates here, that we have, in the year we may have about 1,000 files opened. 1,000 
900 like that files open but 98% of those files are land files land conflicts hmm? 98% of the files that we open in this farm are land conflicts and out of 100 cases that are in court 98% of those cases are land related issues because of the the cause that you've just narrated to us one it is because of the population of people being expanding and uh, the land is not expanding mm. and there is need of ownership of land because of what the muzungu did not because the side of what the muzungu did but every person in uganda will need to have land the constitution of uganda says land in uganda belongs to yeah the nationals but you need to have land the population is big you need to be around the kampala mm. or in the metropolitan however uh managing a plot of land in Muyenga, a mile in Muyenga, a hundred by a hundred. Nowadays in Muyenga, they don't even sell in UGX. You must sell in dollars. Dollars. Uh, the yeah. currency has, ha, has yeah. changed. It has changed. And how many Ugandans can you manage to buy in Muyenga? If it's not a few elite group. So somebody will look for Chivanja. But even a Chivanja nowadays is very expensive. If you go in Makindi, land in Makindi is all Buganda land. There are few in Kizungu, a few titles in Kizungu. I remember I was making a transaction for one of my land that I will not declare in Makindi Central there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we bought land that was not even 100 by 100. But we bought it 420 million in Makindi. Wow, 420 million. Yes, 420 million in Makindi. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So land is very expensive. And people need to have this land. So because of that anxiety to have land, given the background that I've given you, every person, the pressure is too much. You're going to have conflicts. Mm. In acquisition of land and in ownership of land. However, you asked me to tell you where the conflicts come from. We have what we call a historical Issues that have brought the conflicts of land and the issues of land that we have, and we have the present issue. The land office is a problem. How is the land office a problem? At least tell me that. The land office is and the we problem. end it here. The land office is the problem. How? Mm. Today we are having titles overwrapping the other. Mm. What do you mean by titles overwrapping the other? The same land office produces the title over another title. Yet even the first title was produced by the what? The same office. The same office. We go in the court for six years, we are litigating that. You go in a place called Mukono. In Mukono, there is a place called Gulu. Gulu in Mukono. Heaven in Mukono. Yes, Gulu. Mm. They are in Mukono. They have produced titles overwrapping the other. There is already a freehold title. Then they produce a mayor title that has no history. And it is the same land office that is doing this. And in land office, somebody rogers a caveat today. Because mm -hmm. somebody has money. Tomorrow, the caveat is what? Is vacated. With not just viable reasons. reasons. Somebody rogers a caveat and goes back to sit thing. I've rogged the caveat on my land, nobody will take it. But now, if a, if if a, the land office cannot safeguard that. Somebody will come and begin constructing. Mm -hmm. And people will remove bangers to cut each other. Yeah, because if they can't be helped by the office that is supposed to do so. To issue titles. Then we, yeah, we become, you get. we kuwaga, then we kuwaga. And you've Press seen, and yes, and you've been seeing this all over. The land office is also an issue. There, is, there must be something that should be cleared in the land office. Leaving the land office around. As lawyers, we are also part of the cause of the conflict. Counsel, before you tell me the lawyers, are they human beings who work in the 
lands office or they are robots probably moral decay sometime back we had what you call is corruption a moral issue or a legal issue <laughs> you get and yeah, we resolve remember. that corruption is a moral issue it's not a legal issue Mr. Mlan, somebody will come to you and tells you the show that you've been recording with the council for hard. I don't want you to air it. Shouldn't be on air. I'm giving you 10 millions or 40 millions. So if I am morally you dead. know, you know that there is a <laughs> law that prohibiting you from taking that 10 or 40 millions. Yeah. But it goes back to your morals. If I am morally dead, I will you'll say, take uh, it. You will take it. And I know you as a senior journalist, you must have uh, got such things. Yeah. Where people are giving you money as, also as lawyers, we get it. In our line of duty. And you reject. Yeah, because if I was accepting, I wouldn't be having you today. Yes. So somebody will come and say, I'm giving you 100 million to produce a type. Leave other things for me. Then they'll, okay, pay the money. The title will be produced. You get then other things. Those are, are the people in the land's office. Other things are left. Whew. And that is the challenge that we are having. And that is causing a lot of conflicts. We shall go and speak a lot of English in court. But if that is not cleared, we shall keep being in court. So we have an issue with the land office. I, I get you. The land office must be cleared. You cannot have an overlapping title produced by the same office. You have records of over of all of these things. If the title has been produced over land in Kurambiro on a certain block and a plot, why do you produce another title that is overlapping? And when you bring them, they, they, they look alike. They, they are all same. Yes, they are all they are all what? They are all genuine title from one office. Who is to blame? Should we blame the president over that? Of course, you know. Yeah. One individual. Whose institution did not do the work and whose moral is too bad. No one can teach you to love your country. Something shouldn't be done by the government. We should take care. If a president has given you office here and there, or you have been appointed here and there, do your job. Do your job. I'm with you on that. Yes, do your job. But people are not doing that, their job. So, Council. Yes, please. I want to disagree with you, but mm -hmm. and we agree mm -hmm. to end the show. It is today. very heresy. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Our viewers, I know you are as well. You've been because now we are talking about the real thing now, eh? Mm -hmm. That is in your home, that is in your life, mm -hmm. in your businesses. But uh, just allow me. We end the show here. We will have Council in our third, fourth, and probably fifth episode. Uh, when he's explaining this key question on land and as well as he shares more uh, his perspective of, of, on the kind of Uganda that he wishes to see. So for now, Kansa, I want to say thank you so much no for giving us your time mm -hmm. and until we meet again. And mm -hmm. our viewers, we love you so much. We will uh, have him again come back and share his perspective and also um, put to the end this question on land. We love you. Have a blessed evening. Bye-bye. The Uganda we want. So mu Uganda jetu agala mu lutalo no loku lwanyisa obulabba yo bukenu zinze champion to buvundo. Mu na Uganda ino kubanga yenyigira mu fena twenyigira mu lutalo. Ata abalala tebasomye kuzimba. Obula bayizo okuzimba. Uganda jetu agala okulaba. Nge ngudo zo na nkole nunji Public transport in a way. Catieno government here, you are a a carbonado carusifa. Burichotum Uganda chili box. Aza Babi Kama would be Marundi over Maudi Mabi.
minister teyeta agisa kabanga libu debuno zaachi at this time why should somebody import furniture from outside Uganda let us leave in our aim to be in charge for another 36 years or more I really want to see a Uganda that believes in the rule of law. If you have a constitution in place, follow it to the latter. Don't change laws just because you want them to favor you. Kuma nyagalo manye, nti obogaga bo na Uganda bo yeya dalira mu, buita wafe kutakali afe. How can a referral hospital refer you to a private clinic? The Uganda we want to put a tick I am a stakeholder and quite work. Sequence to the one gamba. Uganda, Oyenzo Koka Kananga Mimina, but graduates of our university in Gabanji, Oxinga Bungeriza. Mwe mu focusing on your good degree. A liboba focusing on Yonti, Bien Somie, Bijemo Mulimone and Kola. We are dreaming of a Uganda where at a young age there is such a relationship between parent and son, parent and daughter. Where the daughter can say, This is what I want. Uganda, the Twaga Limpia, Tesola Kuera won't get to Alima Teka. I'm a Teka Gakora. The Uganda we want.